Greetings Cosmoneers and welcome to the workbench. I'm your host Andrew today and what I'm going to be demonstrating is the basic startup of the Cosmoneer showing you how to make sure that you've got all the different things in place, the coil gaps down at the bottom, the pennies in the back, the various things just to make sure that you're all lined up and ready to go. So, the pennies, what I have set up in this particular Cosmoneer is I have six total. I've got two on the right hand side, four on the left. You'll notice a uh, little height difference here. And basically that gets me lined up down here on the coils. You'll probably notice there's a little offset to the left. Uh, you may drift to the right as it comes around. But for the most part, that pretty much has us lined up top to bottom. Now, air gap wise, let me get this camera down here. Forgive me on this uh, shakiness. This is a, basically a boresight cam. You'll notice we've got maybe two millimeters gap. Now with this Cosmoneer, with the testing I've been doing and with the this is Evolution 18.3 the version of Cosmoneer that I've got loaded the Arduino code. You'll want to download this. Uh, at most you've got Evolution 18.2 or lower. This is something that I was working on today based on some of the testing and get a video done. So be sure to download that and you'll be current with what this video is demonstrating. Uh, basically you'll notice as this comes around, I don't know if you have ever observed your Cosmoneer this close, but you'll notice there's not a lot of distance between some of these components. And since we're not doing a lot of high speed maneuvering, that's going to be okay. Uh, you may want to increase this. As a matter of fact, I think I'll go ahead and increase the gap here. It's not going to take much of a turn. There we go. That gives us a little more gap down here. Probably gain us about a millimeter. And so as these come around, give me a little spin. You'll notice our distance is a little increased. It gives us a little more clearance between the edge of the stand and the edge of the Cosmoneer. If you want, you can change the position of the battery replacer board. Right now it's just kind of in there. There's plans in the future to model up some 3D parts. Basically, the best place I can see where this can be taken care of is we can utilize the other screw that comes with the servos and add another piece that slaps onto there and maybe add another little bracket up under the penny coils or the penny holders and then basically have it sit between there. So moving on. The other thing you'll notice is the wiring. If you're suspecting that you've got wiring issues all of your signal wires for the servos and the control moment gyro, the gyro motor I mean, you'll notice the signal wire it's either yellow or white. The other wires are red of course for power and black or brown for ground. Make sure that you've got those orientated correctly. And then of course the servo wire is this one to the left. It's of course the back of the Cosmoneer. And then of course the gyro motor is the connector towards the front. And you'll notice you've got your three pin headers. The other two are left open and then there's these other four pins up here. Those are just for signal wires if you wanted to add some other components that are PWM controlled. They're controlled by this chip here, in case you're wondering. Yeah. Now we've got that covered. Let's plug her in and start her up. Now I'm going to take the headphones off here. 
I'm going to put the mic down there so you can hear it. Basically, you'll hear the uh, beep sequences. If there's any beeps, uh, especially you'll notice the higher pitch tones coming from the gyro motor. If you hear anything different from yours, then that means that your MX-3A ESC has been switched over into a configuration mode. Uh, one of the ways to deal with that is to unplug it and, and let the capacitors discharge. There may be other things that you have to do and we will cover that in a later video or in greater detail in our discussion forum. So, I'm going to plug this in and let's get started. up magnetic north it makes a longer chirping buzzing tone and once it's done that it's satisfied that it has a reasonable accurate calibration meaning that it will skip the calibration this go around if at any time during startup the cosmeter is unable to turn or anything like that then it's going to automatically go into calibration mode because the Cosmoneer is really unable to determine whether or not during calibration that it's successful or not, it automatically just defaults to a success state and overwrites any calibration values that were stored. Um, if you want to change that, uh, you can change the code. There's a particular place in the code where you can change that. Uh, I can post that uh, after this video in the comments or I can post it in the forum and uh, provide a link here basically walking you through where to change that for this version of code. So, let me restart this and I'll show you what to do to force a calibration. So, let me unplug it. Force the gyro motor spinning down. It imparts a torque based on the direction that it's leaning. in. Basically stop the spin. I'll bring up my string up here. Slow it down. So basically the Cosmoneer is expecting just about two to three revolutions once it goes into calibration mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it still by one of the, one of the pillars here as I call them. Something different. Uprights, supports, circuit boards. Blinking LED means we're testing, looking for compass points. It's chirping, basically counting down. In a moment, it's going to chirp and initiate calibration. And spin counterclockwise. Try not to make it wobble so much when you spin yours. Use your finger down here up underneath. Try to stop the wall. 
all so much. And calibration complete. Selenium values, storing them in the EEPROM. And as you can see, the LEDs are jumping around. Basically marking the heading that it's been told to look for. Now, one of the things I'm going to walk you through at the end of this video is what do these numbers mean? So, I'll run through these top to bottom. The H slash D, the T slash E, the R slash PD. What do those mean? Well, the H stands for heading. And so you've got the slash, and so the H is to the left of the slash. Um, obviously, the number towards the middle here, that is the heading. And what that is, is that's actually the heading the compass is spitting out. There's a little bit of averaging, um, there's a little bit of smoothing going on. Basically, the previously read value is being read into the current value. And a percentage of that, the new heading is averaged in. It smooths it out. It seems to give a fairly accurate reading, especially with uh, how fast the Cosmonier turns. You can see how the LED seems to keep a fairly accurate position of where it's at. You'll notice it does jump around a little bit. Uh, that's potentially due to our uh, kind of wobbly calibration. Uh, you can do a different, you know, calibration again, maybe get some better results. Uh, the D is the dwell count. And what that is, as you'll notice right now, it's wanting to turn, or it's attempting to turn to this LED position over here. So if I turn the Cosmonier, see our dwell count increase. And basically what that is is when the angle that it's targeting, which we'll get to target on the screen next, when it's getting close within plus or minus 10 degrees, uh, it starts to increase the dwell counter. And so what's the dwell counter is each time the compass loops around, or the main loop in the Arduino code, when it loops around, each time it comes around, it does that comparison check and when it actually has a good value within that plus or minus 10 it increases the dwell count from 0 to 1 and so basically it's looking for about a 5 and uh, after that it drops out and so we're looking at 5 times to successfully count that we have targeted within range the angle that we're looking for now why do we do that? because right here is our serial infrared port. If we can lock on to a 20 degree spread, then we can successfully target another Cosmonier and communicate with it. So, what's our target angle? So the next line here, the T slash E, the T is our target angle. And so inside the code, this particular code, the target is slowly changed about 30 degrees each time, kind of basically going around the Cosmonier. And the Cosmonier attempts to turn to that particular target like it's doing now. And so the E next to the target is the actual error angle. It's the difference between the heading, in this case about 275, and the target. In our case, that's 180. So the error is about 90 degrees. And as you can see, uh, we're looking this way, and our target is off over here somewhere. If I turn the Cosmonier a little bit, you'll notice it starts to jump around a little bit. And that's partly because our angle is increased. So 210 is over here, and we'll go around 360 is over here, with north being somewhere uh, in this direction. So, what's the next line? The next line has our rate, 
and it's basically uh, how quickly this loop is looping around. There's about a 70 millisecond delay, basically, so we can keep this OLED displayed. If we go any faster than that, uh, and there's some delays with the reading the compass and things, but if we if we go any faster, this display doesn't uh, display right because we're trying to write to it faster than it can actually update on its own. So the angle rate is basically how many angles or degrees are we moving between the changes between headings. And so it's just a rough calculation of um, the difference between the smoothed out angles. You'll notice the uh, angles is jumping around and so our rate, uh, even though we're pretty much at a standstill, you'll notice the rate still kind of jumps around. Which then affects our servo. This is the um, PWM values that are being fed from the Arduino into the PWM controller. It's uh, I2C. It's this big chip in the middle of the screen. It's a 16 channel. And at this point, our servo, you notice our values pretty much stop. We've reached the end of the servo range, and so it can't go any further. And then, of course, the PD is the values being spit out from the PID. So we've got a PID loop in here. It basically kind of smooths everything out. Calculating based on the inputs, uh, the compass values, and we've got some values in there that kind of smooth these variables out and turns it into a number that is basically applied to the actual servo previous values and things like that. Uh, right now the code that's running doesn't have a way to actually reset the actual servo. In this case the only thing that's forcing it to come back up is the uh, target position and is actually the other direction. So I would allow you some questions um, but you're not here. So probably the best way to do that is to post something down below in the video in the comments since this is posted on YouTube or uh, you can post comments on the forum link below where this video is linked from and we look forward to your replies. Thanks a lot and have a good one.